We're going to take a look uh, after this responsive reading we just had regarding the spiritual warfare. And hey Amen. How many of you know that there is spiritual warfare going on? Amen. Hey man, regardless what go, what's going on in our lives, regardless what's going on in somebody else's life, whether we're on vacation or staycation or not, hey Amen. there's still some spiritual warfare. No matter how saved you are, no matter how sanctified you are, no matter how Holy Ghost filled you are, how many tongues that you speak, hey Amen. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. There's still a spiritual battle. There's still a spiritual war, hey Amen, going on in the lives of God's people. Right. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. That's why, hey Amen, over here in Ephesians chapter number six, as we already have read the passage, hey Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter six, verse number 10 through 18, talks about the very thing. And I would just like to entitle this, as you may know, just God's army. Can you say God's army? God's army. Now, if you are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, amen, and you got Jesus on your side, you in the army, amen. You have been enlisted, amen, whether you want it to or not, you're in it, yeah. amen. So there's a battle that's got to be fought. Amen. amen. In the battle, there is nobody on the sidelines. Amen. There is no conscientious objectives. Amen. There is no, amen, somebody saying that I can't do it. Amen. You're an army. You're going to fight. Amen. But even before we, we get to fight, you know, everybody want to fight every now and then. <laughs> but, you know, even that, you got to have some training. So what the Bible lets us, lets us do, what the Bible shows us, what Paul has done here in Ephesians chapter number 6, starting at verse number 10, he, he lays out a framework that we may be able to work ourselves within the army. Take a look at this. Here in, in verse number 10. And it's a four, four points here. First, first point, be strong. Look at verse number 10. He says, finally. After all the talk that we all do, after everything in which he may have shared with somebody in this particular church here in Ephesus, regardless of the things that he wrote, told the children how to respect and honor their parents, told the fathers how not, amen, how to treat their parents, how to, how to treat their children, telling everybody on, on what the best way of doing something for the Lord. And on how to, how to do it that we're, that we're able to really have, do it with love and, and then be able to have love received back. But he goes on and Tina says, finally, my brother. He says, look, I know it's hard. But here's what he says. Be strong. He says, be strong in the Lord. You know what, every now and then, you know, things happen to us, you know, stuff come at us. Amen. Come at us from the left, come at us from the right, right. blind side us, everything. Yeah. Some stuff happens to us. Yes, sir. But yet what he tells all of us who are in the army, he says, be strong in the Lord. And so it lets us know that's where our strength comes from is, is in the Lord. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, we can lift weights all day long. We can do all those things yes, that make us that make us look good on the outside. But what God is looking at is the strength that's fortified on the inside. Uh -huh. He said, "Be strong in the Lord." Yes, that says something. I could be a weakling, but strong in the Lord. Uh -huh. Meaning that all of my trust and all my confidence, all my reliance, is in the Lord. Yes, he says it right here. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Then he says, and in the power of whose might? His, his, his might. It's not how we win. We, 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 no, I mean, this is how we win. Not, not by our strength and, and not by our might and not by anything that we do. But it's all by the strength and the power and the might of the Lord. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. Yeah. And then he goes on and he says, and in the power of his might. Yes. You see, that's what we gotta rely on. That's what we gotta. That's what we gotta gotta keep, regardless what happens in our life, regardless what comes our way. We have gotta be strong in the Lord. We gotta have to have the might of the Lord yes. on our side. Amen. So be strong. And secondly, he tells us right here in the in this next verse. He says, "Put on the whole armor of God." Yeah. He 
says, put it, put it on because of some things that's gonna that's gonna come your way. I, I want you to I want you to first, I want you to be strong. I want you to have that mental toughness. I, I want you to be ready. I, I want you, regardless what you I want the word to be in you so you can be able to be able to stand regardless of what come your way. Be strong in him. He says, not only that, yeah, but also he says that in the power of his might, but he says, put on a whole arm of God. Uh-huh. Secondly, he tells us to prepare yourself. Yeah. He says, be strong. Now he says, prepare yourself. No, in preparation, we got to put something on. Uh-huh. And he says right here, put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. It's one thing about it, being in the military, even in boot camp, it, you know, you go in here, you're, you're straight from the street. You don't, you don't know nothing about no uniform, know nothing about no armor, but you get all this equipment. But before they issue it to you, they give you instructions on how to put it on. They tell you why, what the purpose of each element of this, of this uniform, of this, of this suit of armor is about. Mm-hmm. They, give you the, they, they tell you the, the purpose of it. So then when, when, when you put it on, when you, when, when you don that gear, you know that you're ready to stand. Regardless what comes your way. Yeah. And then by the time you put it on, you have just something inside of you. And you say, enemy, bring it on. <laughs> Basically asking the question to the enemy, are you ready to die for your country? So put on the whole armor of God. Uh-huh. And you know that we always had this thing, you know, had called a buddy check or, or, or you know, you're, you're, you know, somebody else is always, there's somebody in the front of you, somebody in the back of you, and somebody on the side of you. Because what happens is that whenever you don your gear, you know, every now and then, how many know when you have seven loops in your belt, you have a tendency of missing one? Then when you take your coat off, you know, you walk around feeling real good, you know. You don't look in the mirror, you said, I feel good, I look good. You know, I probably put some stuff on, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, you know, that, what do you call that? Yeah, yeah, the aftershave, uh, uh, the, uh, Lord, you know what it's called, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Old Spice, yeah. Old Spice, what? What? Uh, oh, and you know, put it, that smell good, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> men know what we're talking about, smell good. You know, put it on. What's that? Uh, yeah, I'm available. There you go, sir. That's what I'm talking about. We on the same, amen. We, we on the same page, yeah. Put it, put it, put it on, just, just pile it on. No, you look good. Smell good and everything. You go straight and everything, you know, without your coat. And there's a loop missing, brother. <laughs> So, so, so what happens, because in the mirror you can't see behind you, but you can see what's up front. So, so what happens is, look, look whenever we're, we, you know, we train, we, we put, on it, put on our equipment and everything, but you know there's always somebody on the side of us going to say, soldier, whatever uh, uh, you are, man, you, you know, whatever you meet, you say, look, let me help you with this. You miss this. Why? Because it's so important. You know, if you put on your gear in the military and you're ready to go out in the field, everything's supposed to be tight. Uh-huh. Nothing's supposed to be making any noise. Stuff should be taped down. Should be tied tight. Uh, tied tight. Tied tight. Should be real tight. <laughs> so whenever you walk, nothing is heard. Whenever you, if you can, even if you, whatever you got to do that, that the enemy cannot hear you, you can sneak up on them. You can have all these things. You got water inside your thing. It shouldn't be like jiggling around. Everything should be just, just, just tight on you. So what happens is that, is that when he said put on the whole armor, hey amen, what it is that we're going to check out with neighbor and make sure that our neighbor have every part of the equipment that we're supposed to have. You know, why we know we're supposed to be praying, hey amen. I done my neighbor, neighbor, you need to be praying. Amen. Something going down. You know how it is and it seems like something about to go down. You gotta get that other feeling. That's when you're supposed to start praying. Everybody tell your, tell your neighbor, tell somebody, hey, let's pray. Get somebody on the phone, let's pray. Because we're in the army. We gotta stay ready. We gotta be ready. Mm-hmm. Amen. The song, the choir just gotta do singing. Uh, what's that? Pray we all be ready for his return. Uh-huh. Uh, thank you, choir. Amen. <laughs> That's right. We're supposed to be on the alert. Yes, sir. We're supposed to hear things, hear everything, you know, and see things being on the alert. 
But he says, be strong. He says, prepare yourself. And we're talking about the preparation. And, and yes, yes, we're talking about the, the military and how you got a dog gear, how you got to put it on the gear. But, but guess what? What Paul was writing here when he began to write this, and, and as the folk understood about the military, because the Jews looked at that old military. That old military rule that they had by, by you know, Rome and stuff. They saw those soldiers walking around in their gear and stuff. They had their little knives on the side, you know, and things like that. And they had their pretty nice little boot sandals on and stuff like that. You know how folks, they be looking good. It's about the Marines, you know. <laughs> the, the, uh, airborne. You know, okay, okay, they the airborne. Okay, I can't say nothing about that, you know. But yeah, you know, be, be looking at, yeah, they check them out. So, hey man, his, his, his uniform and stuff, saw that, saw the helmet that he had on, and, and Paul sized it up. He knew what those things were for. He knew that the protection that they needed. And he saw the wars. And he saw those who were wounded. He understood what happens, what would happen if, if you're not fully armed. But here Paul says, look, put on the whole armor of God. Hey man, don't need no part off. But he says that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies or the schemes, amen, of the devil. And that's what's got to happen. You see, we got to have it on in order to be able to stand against the schemes that he has. Trust me, he, he's drawing up some stuff for us. He's drawing it up right now. Amen. He want to catch us, amen, while, we're, while our guard is down. He want to catch us, amen, while we're not thinking about it. Uh -huh. He want to catch us, amen, when our, when our mind is just wondering. You know how it is. Who in here thinking about that roast you got in the oven? <laughs> you, you know, he want, he, want to, he, want to, he, want to, he want to catch us off guard, you see. But what Paul tells us, he said, look, put on the whole armor. Yes. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I saw something here, and I like to read it off. It says... In regards to put on, when he wrote this and he talked about how, you know, how the Bible is written in this different, where it's not written in, written in English, you know, we, we do that real good. Uh, amen. And Sister Sandra Jones taught us this morning, us in English. We put stuff in there that we want to put in there real good too. But suit me and boot me and everything. But here, here he says, look, put on. And it looked at in, in this Greek, you know, this New Testament, how this writing is, and it talks about it that it's an imperative. It denotes a sense of urgency. Listen to this. Demanding immediate action. He's not just saying it. He said, put on. That means you're not, you're not going to be sitting around and, and continue a conversation and stuff while the enemy is right outside the gate. Just continue the conversation. Stuff. No, he said, put it on. It's time to dawn and clear. It's time to put that thing on. It's time to get ready. It's time to lock and load. We're the army. God's army. Says, look. Tells us to prepare, to prepare ourselves. But he says here in 12, he says that, therefore we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See all the physical preparation we have to do if we were in the army? But he said, look, this fight, this battle, it's not about this flesh thing. It's not about the, the, the M16s, the, the AR-15, whatever else they got out there these days. They're not talking about all these things in which, in which we have in order to, to, to kill people, to do all kinds of, not even talking about that. He's saying it like this, look. He says, here's the look. For we wrestle not, or we don't fight against flesh and blood. It's not even about that. So all the killing that we see on the, on, on the news, you know, when we turn it on this evening at 5 o'clock, tonight at 10, all the stuff we see. Mm -hmm. If you're in a depressed mood, don't turn it on. Because once you see it, it's going to get you there anyway. <laughs> but you're not talking about, with all the stuff that we see, take a listen, take a listen. That's not really what's happening. What's happening is on the other side of what we hear about. This thing is spiritual. You see, there's a, there's a scheme that the devil has. Getting the minds of people. And he's turning and doing what he wants because the people are allowing him to. Yeah. Yeah, not, you know, I say the people, and I know we say the, you know, the people talking about folk that ain't saved, but guess what? Yeah. Those who are all sanctified and stuff, we do the same thing. 
Amen. Because it's all about us allowing whomever we want to control us. You have a spirit. You look. You are in control. Unfortunately, I hope I, I, if, 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 if we can be robots with God, Lord, here I am. But that's not how he wants us. He wants us to come to him voluntarily. So, we've got to prepare ourselves. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, spirit, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, he says, of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what the that's what the battle is. Yes, so if, since it's not flesh and blood, it's not about the uniform that I wear. It's not about the type of physical weapon I may have. But it's about some spiritual weaponry, mm -hmm. spiritual things that I need in order to to be able to to battle against this this spiritual battle that we have. So yes. He says, no, it's not about flesh and blood. But it's about a, a spiritual battle. It's things that's going on behind the scenes, y'all. How many of you know that everybody that we see, there's something going on on the inside? We all have a battle going on right now. Years ago, they used to have a commercial. They had an angel on this shoulder. They had a devil on that one. They, 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 they prepared it early. They showed on commercials and stuff. And one tell you do this, and the other one tell you do that, and, and everything like that. So there was that battle going on. That was you know, a visual uh, thing that we can see. But guess what? That's what's happening on the inside of us. Y'all think that old man is gone? We resurrect him every day. Sure do. But God is good. Because he tells us to put on that whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand that we may be able to, to, to even, even go against the wiles of the devil the schemes, all of his, his thing, the things in which he has so he tells us to be strong, he tells us to prepare ourselves and thirdly in verse number 13 tells us look, stand firm look at 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God so Okay, a whole armor, everything, everything. You know, we've got a visual, visual of this, but but in all actuality, a spiritual aspect of a of a of an armored person. So he put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. How many of us know when, when the evil day is? Do y'all know when the evil day is? <laughs> I'm gonna let you in on a secret. It's today. That's right. Whenever you don your gear, you ready. Because you got to stand when? Today. Guess what? Tomorrow ain't here. But when tomorrow comes, guess what? It's going to be called today. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that we have to have to be, be armored up. Then we're able to, to enjoy and rejoice and do all those things that the Bible tells us to do in this day. We gotta seize this day. We gotta seize this moment. This is what we have. Yes, I can't talk about what I don't have. Y'all heard the thing? Something about the fish you got in your hand, I mean, something in your hand and then something in the bush, what was that? Two birds in the hand and two in the bush. Okay, so yeah, what's that, bird in the hand? Better than two in the bush. Ah! That's right. Even the Bible tells us, you know, when it comes to, he said, look, uh, if I'm going to give, I, don't, I can only give what? But what I have, I can't give what I ain't got. So let you know I ain't pledging nothing. You know how folks say pledging something. Give what I got. Look. So we got to be strong. And the Lord the power of his might. 
We've got to prepare ourselves. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand. That you may be able to quench all the fire. That you may be able to just to be there. I think it says stand firm in that evil day. Because that evil day is going to come. And then he goes on and says, look, where I take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand an evil day and having done all, you've done everything. You've been on guard. You've been looking. You've been watching. This is spiritual, y'all. Done all to stand. Look what 14 says. It tells us to do what? Stand. Keep on standing. You don't see nothing happening? Everything seemed to be okay. All's good. Everybody's keeping it 100. Everything is straight. But he says, stand. keep on, keep on standing. Because the battle ain't over. The battle is not over. No time that we would, would, would stand, amen, uh, we, we, we call that fire watch. Like saying, fire watch. Don't they have like fire alarms or something like that? Fire watch. I'm just simply another name, you know, guard, guard duty pretty much. You're watching. You're being alert. You're looking to see what's going on. Yes. Making sure everything is going on is supposed to be going on. It ain't supposed to be going on. You're taking care of it. <laughs> Whatever it is. So, so we got to stand there. We got to watch. And then after that four hours, somebody else come and, and then take your place. And then you're able to get a little bit of rest. So what happens is that is that this spiritual this spiritual army, this God's army that, that we have, this 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 is where we are, whole armor of God, and we're doing we're we're just watching. And the thing is that we're vigilant. The thing is that we're always watching, we're we're always on the alert. We're never putting our guards down. Why? Because guess what? The devil don't sleep. Amen. He ain't getting no rest. He's waiting on us. But yes, it's be strong, prepare yourself, stand firm. Once you've, got the, once you've done all that, you, that, that you're supposed to do to stand, say stand there for having your loins girt about with truth. Now he's really basically, he, he landed down right now. You see, you got, your, got, that, got that belt on. You know, the belt keeps everything together. Y'all know that? The belt keeps everything together. On the belt, you know, in the military, you have everything connected to the belt. Everything is connected to that belt. This thing that goes around you. Mm -hmm. You see, you have your water. You have your weapon gear. You have your ammunition. I mean, you have everything. Everything is just connected to that thing. Mm -hmm. to, that, to, that, to that belt. And guess what, y'all? Yeah. Everything, and, and I want to repeat this, everything yeah. has got to be connected to the truth. So he says, hey amen, he says it right here in this, in this verse right here. I'm going to say it again. He says that, it says, having your loins girt about with truth. Yes. Your waist yeah. girt about with truth. So first and foremost, we've we got to have the truth. How, how many of you got the truth? Amen, amen, amen. Amen, can I get a witness? <laughs> you know, you see, we got to have the truth. And I'm going to tell you who the truth is. The truth is Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. amen. The truth is Jesus Christ. Yes. Have your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. Yes, and as, as Paul began to, to, to lay this out, to describe this and everything to everybody that's around you, and they're able to, to visualize it, to see that, and, and they see the breastplate and everything that's that's before the, you know, that, that you know, it's on the men and everything that to, to help them out as things come their way. He says, look. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And then your feet shod, meaning that they have those sandals on or, you know, these days we have boots on and everything like that. You know, it's shod means that, that you have it on, you, you put it on. And, but here he says, not a man, not just a man that you put it on and you can walk in man. But here he said, put it on, he said, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Can you tell your neighbor to put your shoes on? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. With the preparation of the gospel of peace. He said it so emphatically, made me feel as though somebody got their shoes off. <laughs> he said, with the preparation of the gospel of peace, amen. Amen. Wherever you go, amen, you should be taking the gospel. You should be taking the gospel with you, and that gospel, amen, is peace. Amen. Jesus. 
Amen. The Prince of Peace. Uh-huh. Shout out the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, he says. You got everything, but he said, above all. Yes, yes. <laughs> Taking the shield of faith. Amen. You see, the shield is the one that goes out in front of you. You know, y'all seen different movements, maybe you haven't, but you know, in the you know, old way, you know, those little our army, those pictures you see, like 300 or something, or those other movies that they, they, they go, they're, they're their shields and everything. So everything that's coming down, the the, the, uh, the arrows and stuff, and the firing things that shoot at them, see that, those, uh, those shields just block it. Those shields, and then they hit the, they hit the shield, they fall off. And some of them were wooden shields, and an arrow would stick in it and everything. But, but, all, but, all, but all in all, it was a shield, it protected them. You see, that's what that shield was for. But here, here's what Paul says. He says, look, he says, it says that uh, above all, taking the shield, he says, of faith. Yes. Now, if a regular shield would ward off anything that coming at you like that, then it doesn't matter. He said the shield of faith. So therefore, the shield of faith, if a shield is up before you, the shield of faith is right there. So if faith is here, anything that's coming at faith, y'all, it's not going to stand. It's not gonna hold out. Yeah. That thing's gonna fall. Yes, Because yes, of faith. A little bit of faith. Amen. I was reading in and I'm gonna I'm gonna loosely tie this in Isaiah 59 and 19. I'm gonna read that right fast. And, and uh, it's interesting because I just wanted to just bring that out. You've heard this before. Take a listen to this. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Take a listen to this, y'all. When the enemy shall come in, look at this, like a flood. Y'all know what a flood is, don't you? Like a flood. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard or a banner against him. So when the enemy tries to come in, you know, a flood is overwhelming, y'all. Yes. It's overwhelming. You might just give up when a flood comes. But here it says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. Yes. I mean, so many of them. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard or a banner against him. You know what a banner is? And it's a flag, just a thing, and people can see it and stuff. And, and but look, it says, it says, shall uh, uh, it says, shall lift up a standard against him. And I say that because of the fact that faith would do all that, that, that it says that it's supposed to do according to the word of God. No flood, no army, outside, no nothing be able to come against you because of the faith that you have in Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. Now look, years ago, and, and I have not, I'm, I'm going to bring this out because it's so interesting. Years ago, I, this one guy we studied with years ago, I was in 29 Palms, California. And we, we were looking at this passage and he laid it out. It was so cool. He said, look at this right here. He talked about how the, you know, the Hebrew and, and everything uh, laid out. I want to just, just, take a, just to take a thought or look at it because, you know, we're not the ones who put the, the commas and everything in this anyways. Look, he says, when the enemy shall come in. And he, take, he said this right here. Put a pause or put a comma right there. And then look at this. Like a flood. Huh? The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. <laughs> it's got to reverse. See what it says right there. But regardless of the fact, amen, if you have faith, amen, it shall do what, amen, faith will act, faith will do. Faith is action, y'all. Amen. The Bible lets us know what that kind of faith is. Faith is a, is a sour, or with the, um, as a mustard seed, we talk about mustard seed this morning. Mustard seed, you know, you can say to this mountain, be not removed, amen, and the mountain will move and cast into the sea. A little bit of faith. But yes, so be strong, prepare yourself, stand firm. And the rest of it says, it says, above all, taking a shield of faith, where, wherewith, with that, ye shall be able to, to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. It didn't say half of the darts of the enemy. It said all of the fiery darts of the enemy, every one of them. It will not penetrate. 
because of your faith. That's just how much God, amen, has invested inside of us uh-huh. with the faith that you have, amen. that you have in him. He says in verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. <laughs> See, the helmet's important. Even if you go on a, on a construction work site, the first thing they're going to give you is what? Oh, yeah. uh, Deacon, yeah, you, amen, amen. Deacon Jones, that hard hat. He's, he's work construction, hard hat. Why, sir? Protect your head. Protect your head. Yeah, you know what I mean? So this helmet of salvation is for protection. That means that, look, you ain't that. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Guess what, y'all? Save, save, save. Ha! Amen, amen. We are saved. We are protected. We are in there. So, yes, take... The helmet of salvation. He says that. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. So when you speak God's word, it is sliced right into the enemy. Don't you know words are powerful? Yes, sir. And the word of God is more powerful? Amen. So when we say things to tear someone down, doesn't that hurt y'all? It don't hurt y'all, y'all. Nah, I got it. Look, 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 look. When somebody says something bad against you, don't that hurt? Yeah, it hurt. You know, some people say, some say sticks and stones may break my bones. But I say, word, what? Words are never what? Harm me? Uh huh. Not true. <laughs> Words shall do harm. Yes, sir. Amen. Sticks and stones may break my bones. But somebody says I'm bad at him, so it's going to hurt me. You know, I'm going to lick my wounds and they're like that, but you know, I, I, I got to get back up and keep on rolling. Yeah. So we got to be careful what we say and how we say it. Amen. So you can tear somebody down, you can, you can kill somebody with your words. Yes, sir. You can also build somebody up with Amen. it. You can help somebody with your words. Yes, sir. You can comfort somebody with your words. Yes, Just with your words. Yes. But with the word of God, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. the world were framed by the word of God. Amen. We were made by the word of God. Amen. Amen. We speak the word of God. And when we speak the word of God, here's what the Bible says. That's the sword of the spirit. So be careful how we use, guess what? The word of God. Amen. Use it properly. Because the word of God is so precious. The word of God does not give to anybody. It's precious. So we got to treat it like it's precious. Can't just stop cursing somebody with the word of God. Who are we? Forget where we came from. We weren't always saved. I didn't want to be around with saints when I wasn't saved. Because saints were scary. You know, they, 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 they basically they were like next to God. And I, that wasn't for me. That made me uncomfortable. But when we have the word of God, mm-hmm. you find that folk that's on the other side will come to you and ask you, can you pray for me? Yeah. Can you send the word up for me? Yeah. Don't try to correct them. Can you talk to the man upstairs for me? Don't, don't, don't try to correct them. No. Just, just accept it. God is doing something. So we got to recognize that. It's not about what we see. It's what we don't see. Mm-hmm. Something is happening. So yes, be strong. Amen. Prepare yourself. Stand firm. 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the war and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And lastly, amen. Amen. So be strong. Prepare yourself. Stand firm. And lastly, number four, pray always. Can you say pray always? Pray Tell your neighbor to pray always. Pray always. Oh, we need some prayer, y'all. We need some prayer warriors. Amen. We're in the army. We're warriors. If we pray, we're prayer warriors. 
So we all act like it. Well, not act, act, act. When you act, you just act. That means when you get done, you ain't that no more. You know, but thing act, you know, that was called hip, hip, hypocrite, right? You know, two faced. Yeah, I said two, two faced. But be who God has called you to be. That's who I am. Be it. Look. Lastly, pray always. 18 says, pray and always. With all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So how do you pray always? In the Spirit, you can always pray. Somebody here praying right now, Lord, touch him so he can hurry up and finish up. <laughs> we pray, pray always in the Spirit. See, the Spirit, you see, you can, you can pray regardless what you're doing, regardless where you are, you can pray in the Spirit. Nobody even knowing that you're praying. And that's what, how powerful God's Word is. How, how powerful, the, amen, how much power you have. He says right here, praying always with, the, with, 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 with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching there are two with all perseverance. And supplication for some saints. Because you know. All, huh? all saints. <laughs> yeah. Yeah you're right. You're right. Okay. So. Here's what it says. It's what it says right. That's what it says. Okay. It says look. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance. With all that you got. With all that you got. And supplication for all saints. Amen. Now, you know, we categorize who saints. Right? You know, I said, you ain't. You're a saint. You ain't. You're a saint. Thank God that we don't categorize. We cannot. Once again, who are we? Guess what, y'all? It should be to the point where we are in Christ now for us to just make it in. Amen. Trying to tell somebody who ain't and who is. <laughs> Trying to make it in myself. Amen. Do what the Bible says. Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and say, yes, I have him. But Lord, I'm still. I got to do I got to do for you. Pray always. So he said, don't, don't stop. Perseverance. All perseverance. Don't, don't, don't stop. Continue. Continue. Praying in, 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 you know, in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit. While you're walking on your way, praying, praying, praying. When you, whatever you're doing, praying. Sitting right here, praying. But I don't know what to pray for. All you got to do is talk to him. You know, something going to come up knowing that you got to pray. Praying, praying, praying. And, that, and that's what, and that's what getting, man, being in God's army is all about. That's what being in, in God's army, that's what being a soldier in God's army is all about. We got to love one another. We got to be there for one another. Amen. amen. Because it's still a battle. You know, we're going to have, amen, our ups. Yes, yes. And we're going to have our downs. But, but even while we're up, we got to be there for one another. Even while we're down, we got to be there for one another. Because this is a battle we're in. It ain't going to stop. It's going to continue until Jesus comes back for us. Amen. So, yes, God's army, you're in. So since we're in, we might as well learn as much as we can in order to, amen, to be able to be, to, to be who God has called us to be, putting out in the whole armor of God, understanding what this armor is all about, so we can use it accordingly and use it properly. Because even sometimes, amen, when you, if you got a gun, you had to go to class for it. And that class taught you how to use it. And when to use it. It taught you that if you use it incorrectly, then you got there are consequences. The word of God, we gotta learn it. We gotta apply it. We gotta use it appropriately. We gotta use it right as best as we can. And sometimes when we're not able to, the Holy Spirit will bring it up to us and show us. He'll direct us, he'll guide us. Why? Because Jesus would have it that way. He's the one that died for us. He's the one that laid it out for us. He's our captain in the army. 
He's the one that's in charge. We follow him. He's in lead. He's the lead. And we are the followers. We are disciples. And then God bless you, saints. We are in God's army. The door to church is open. Let us stand.